Is Helium 10 worth it? And if it is, what is the best way to use Helium 10 to grow profit for your Amazon business? Hi, and welcome to the Amazing Escape Plan channel. My name is Sumner Hobart. In this video, I will be reviewing almost every single one of Helium 10's tools to answer those two important questions. But really quick, before we get to the video, you need to understand your goals. So for a vivid example, let's say that you wanna go dig a hole out in your yard and someone gives you a knife or you wanna go cut vegetables in your kitchen and someone gives you a shovel, right? The tool doesn't seem very helpful because it's mismatched with the goal. So, you know, is a tool valuable or not? Really, really depends on your goals. So what I've done here is I put together this Google Sheet, which basically recaps what I'm about to cover in this video. The video is gonna give a lot more gold nuggets and I'm gonna try to drop as much knowledge and actually click into my Helium 10 account and show you some of the different tools. But this is sort of a recap. And here you can see, you know, basically the category. So product research, listing optimization, analytics, keyword research, etc. The Helium 10 tool or tools associated with that category. And then my analysis for why I think the tool is either great, okay, or not very good. And you can actually see based on the color coding what I think. So green basically means that I think this is a really great tool by Helium 10 for this specific purpose. Basically, you know, a really great knife or really great shovel. Yellow means that I think the tool is good or it could be useful, but there might be other free tools out there or other paid tools that might be even better than this. Next and lastly, we have red, which indicates, again, this is all subjective in my personal opinion, but that I don't believe the tool is very good and would definitely recommend going somewhere else. And again, you can see my rationale for why both in the video and then a couple you know, sentences highlighted here next to it. And as you'll see in this sheet, uh, the majority of tools, in my opinion, fall into that yellow category, followed by green and then red. So again, depends on your goal, your purpose. And we're including a free link to this Google Sheet in the description section and comment section below. Just make sure when you click on the link, go up to file, and then make a oh, file and then make a copy to make your own free copy for reference. And if you do like the video, really appreciate giving the video a thumbs up, comment below with any questions or input. If you disagree with any of my analysis, let me know and consider subscribing for actually valuable content every single week that will grow your e-commerce and Amazon FBA business. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the video. So I'm here in my Helium 10 account. And once you log in, whether you pay for one specific tool or for the entire one of the suites, um, whether it's monthly or annual, once you log in and create your account, you'll see all of the different tools that are available on the left-hand side divided by different categories. So first we have product research, listing optimization, analytics, keyword research, learning, operations, and marketing. Okay, so I'll start off with product research. So here we have three different tools within this category. We have uh, Helium 10 Black Box, Trendster, and My Lists, okay? Of these, Black Box is the only one that I use, and I'll kind of show you how I use it, which is very different from how everyone else uses it. Uh, Trendster basically can help you identify trends on Amazon. However, with my personal strategy, and I find it's a much better and more effective strategy, is to identify trends using Pinterest Etsy and Google keyword volume that exists outside of Amazon. So basically find this trend before it hits Amazon, be the first seller on Amazon for this category. And then kind of that tide rises. You're the first one to get reviews. It's much less competitive. You can really easily dominate. You can rank easily on Amazon, rank easily also on Google or rank your Amazon listing on Google. But anyway, finding trends outside of Amazon, that is my strategy and what I prefer. So therefore I don't use it, but I'm not against the Trendster tool. Next, we have the My List. It's just a kind of convenient place that you can save your different product ideas. For me personally, I have this extremely robust, very kind of detailed Google Sheet, and I keep all of my product ideas there along with all of the different data, like search volume, you know, top five competitor reviews, top seller, estimated sales volume, all of those different kind of like data points. And that is kind of all um, there in the Google Sheet. If you guys want it, let me know in the comments, and I'd be happy to provide that to you since it's free and you know, I'm already using it but that's what I prefer instead of my list. But again, not against it, it can be helpful. But of the three, the one that I use the most is Blackbox, okay? And really, really important point that I wanna get across. 
So Helium 10, Viral Launch, Jungle Scout, and some of these other Amazon FBA or Amazon seller tools have a very similar type of tool available, which is very similar to Blackbox. Basically, it's this Amazon product catalog and you can use these different filters. For example, you can use the category filter to look for specific categories, min and maximum on monthly revenue, review count. There's advanced filters uh, down here where you can look for listings that have a certain keyword in the title, et cetera, right? A lot of things you can do. But basically you have um, the product catalog and you can filter and slice and dice the data. Uh, and with Helium 10, right? This is in the product research section because most people use these types of tools for product research. I do not. Why? Because I've, after talking to literally hundreds of Amazon sellers, so many sellers that have talked to me have said this story. Hey, um, I found this product opportunity. It looked like a really great idea. I s started sourcing from China, you know, started producing and, and started launching on Amazon. And as soon as I started launching or even like right before I was going to launch, all of these competitors came in that are like brand new. And you know what happened is all of these sellers are using the same filters and the same tools in the same way. And every guru on YouTube or has a thousand dollar course, they're all telling you, I use this differently. Here's my unique filter that I use with Helium 10. It's going to show you different products than everybody else. And it doesn't. And all of these people are basically looking at the same product opportunities and end up, even though it's not competitive at the time, it becomes very competitive quickly. So because of that, going back to my philosophy, which again, this philosophy works, it's proven. It's not just a theory is identifying product opportunities with especially high Google keyword volume that don't exist on Amazon, or there's like no options or at least very, very few options on Amazon. And then launching that way, because almost no Amazon seller is utilizing Google keyword data and everyone's using the same tools like Helium 10 black box in the same way. It's not a bad tool, but again, with my experience talking to many sellers and even my personal experience, uh, I would not recommend and don't use it for product research. Instead, what I use this for is Amazon PPC product research. What does that mean? So with Amazon PPC or Amazon advertising, you have the opportunity and the ability to target both keywords and products. So basically when you target keywords, you pay Amazon to take your listing and show up for certain keywords in search results. With product targeting, you can pay Amazon to take your listing and then appear on specific product pages. So basically when someone, you know, scrolls down a product page, there's different images, there's the reviews, there's all the, you know, different information, the product description. You can also show up there as a sponsored product listing. And these ads can actually be very, very profitable, especially when you use what I'm about to share with you. So what I do is when I want to kind of create these campaigns and I create campaigns for all my products because they're very, very profitable is uh, in the title keyword search section here, type in your product keyword. So for example, if you're selling a soap mold, let's say soap mold, then for the review count, put a maximum of one. So basically we want to find all products on Amazon with the word soap mold in the title and have a maximum of one review. So they either have zero reviews or only one. What does that mean? These are very low competitive um, products. So it's going to be easier to compete with them and ultimately have lower cost per clicks. I click on search. And what that's going to do is it's going to generate this huge list. As we see, there's 200 plus products uh, that have the word soap mold in the title that have either zero or one reviews. I'm going to download all of these products and then I'm going to target them with a specific low bid, um, you know, maybe around like 20, 25 cents to start or even, you know, max of like 50 cents and target these different products in this low competition campaign. They can be very profitable, very low ACoS, and a lot of sellers aren't utilizing. So amazing tool. This saves me so much time. I would not be able to do this on my own manually. It would take me forever to find 200 plus products on Amazon on my own. So the tool is super helpful for that, uh, but not as much for product research. So hope that makes sense. And also with product research, most of the tools can be accessed in the Helium 10 web application, which is where we just were and we'll spend most of the time in the video. But Helium 10 also has a Chrome extension, which I've talked about before. And you can just Google Helium 10 Chrome extension and then download and install it on your Chrome browser, which is free to do. I just create a free account. And with that free account, you can access some of the different tools. By far my favorite, if we actually pull up over here, is the review insights tool. So basically you can go to your top like one to five different competitors, uh, go here to the Chrome extension, okay? And then click on review insights. And once you do that and click on review insights, then you will see some of the top positive and negative reviews along with their average um, highest frequent phrase associated with that review. And basically quickly see where are people's biggest pain points with the existing products or with your competitors 
and it's gonna help you develop and differentiate your product really powerful. And this one's 100% free. And as some of you already know, I've already talked about this a lot because it's an awesome, awesome, awesome tool. Totally worth it uh, because it's free. So definitely use it. And then on the other end, um, which is paid, if we go back to the Helium 10 Chrome extension uh, that I wanna call out is the X-Ray tool. So what you'll do with the X-Ray tool is you'll type in um, you know, your product keywords into the search bar. In this case, we'll stay with the same example of soap molds. Click on the Chrome extension. Click on X-Ray. And once you do that, basically the most important data that I use is revenue data. So Jungle Scout, Viral Launch, Helium 10, eGrow, uh, and other Amazon you know, seller or Amazon FBA tools will give you revenue estimates for different products as we see here. So if we go here to this uh, column and we organize in descending order, we have basically the highest estimated monthly revenue to lowest along with what the actual estimated monthly revenue is. So for example, we see that this product here uh, it estimates generates about n over $90,000 in revenue per month. Uh, if we move down here to this soap mold, we have about $26,300 per month. And based on my own testing and research with my own products to like compare, here's my actual monthly revenue. And then here's what different tools tell me. Helium 10 and Viral Launch are the two most accurate. So that's really reassuring to me. And some, you know, Hel Helium 10 might be a little bit more accurate here. Viral Launch a little bit more here, but still very accurate. Uh, data, which is very important to me. So because of that, then um, that's a big reason I like to use uh, Helium 10. This is super important. So if I'm getting into a category already on Amazon, like I want to enter the soap mold market, this is going to help me figure out, okay, is there a lot of demand? Like, can I actually make money here? So it's a really good way to estimate demand before you get into it. And also know, hey, here's, if, if I want to sell, you know, $20,000 a month worth of product, and I sell you know, my product for $20, then I know I kind of reverse engineer and I know, okay, I need to order this many units in order to have enough units to be able to sell $20,000 worth per month, if that makes sense, okay? So it helps with knowing how many products to source initially and if there's overall demand. So love, 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 really great tool. I use this all the time is X-Ray and um, also use the Review Insights tool, which I would go ahead, get the free Chrome extension um, and use this if you haven't already, really powerful. And moving on, we move to listing optimization. A few different tools here. Here's what I'm gonna say overall. So there's kind of all these tools here. In general, when it comes to keyword research and listing optimization, in general, I prefer using the seller tools tool. Um, They're a competitor of Helium 10, of course. And basically for a lot of these tools, specifically in the listing optimization section here, they kind of have all these tools, in my opinion, organized a little bit better, a little bit more advanced and kind of just as easy to use. So if I was gonna you know, use listing optimization, I would prefer seller tools, but still these aren't bad. Um, it just, I wouldn't really pay specifically for these and I'll explain why. So starting off first, we have Frankenstein. This is simply a keyword processor. You take a big you know, list of keywords, you put them here into this uh, tool, into the section, and then you can you know, remove certain characters, you can replace words, you can remove duplicates. So this can be really helpful when you're kind of optimizing your Amazon listing when you're trying to find you know, good keywords to target with your Amazon PPC. But I mean, I would never pay for this tool because all of these tools, like for example, if you Google free replace uh, characters online tool or free text counter tool or free remove duplicate tool on Google, you'll find these tools. So it's convenient to have and it's kind of good to have, but I wouldn't pay for it if that makes sense. Um, so that's Frankenstein. Next we have Scribbles, which is a listing um, optimizer. Basically you put in your keywords here on the left-hand side, and then it's kind of just a nice kind of clean place to create your title, your bullet points and your subject matter from your keywords. So you kind of have your keywords on the left organized from highest search volume to lowest. And then you can kind of take those and strategically put them into your title, your bullet points and so on. Like I said, I really like seller tools way of doing this a lot better. It's a little bit more advanced. I have videos on it, but in general, I'm actually not using either one at this point. Now I'm using Google docs. So I just have, I'm a Google Sheets with all of my keywords that I want to use. And then just Google Docs. It's free. I like the workflow. It works really well for me. I love using kind of those Google products. And um, that's what I do instead of using either one. Uh, but again, still can be good to have. Nice kind of like organization here. Uh, but that's just kind of my personal workflow. Okay. Moving on, we have Index Checker. This is just a place where you can um, input, you know, 200 phrases at a time. And just check to see, is your product indexed? Because remember... Index means that you're able to be seen or you're searchable for a certain keyword. Ranking means that you're actually like ranking somewhere in the search results uh, and hopefully, you know, page one, position one for those keywords. 
So step one is indexed. If you're not indexed, that means there's some, you either don't have that keyword in your listing somewhere or that there's some kind of glitch with Amazon that needs to be resolved. So that's kind of the step one to make sure you're indexed for all your important keywords. Step two is then to start increasing your rank for those keywords using external traffic, Amazon PPC, whatever. So this kind of helps. You can do this manually um, on Amazon, but you can only check your index for free you know, in Amazon, the search bar, one by one. So this kind of saves you a little bit of time. Again, definitely helpful, definitely good uh, to kind of have and definitely good to kind of check. But like I said, wouldn't kind of pay for this tool, as I've said, I think several times now. Next, moving on to listing analyzer. And this is another important point and another big reason for uh, seller tools is basically you can kind of analyze your overall product listing and just look at different metrics and see, okay, you know, uh, this section of your listing is doing really well. This one's not performing so well. In general, these automated tools that kind of give your listing a grade or an analysis aren't really the best. They're good in general, especially if you're more of a beginner. But really, like, I can look at a listing and I know, okay, this, needs, this specifically needs to be improved. Or I can look at certain metrics, like my click-through rate, my conversion rate, um, things like that, and see what needs to be improved. But for a beginner, it can be helpful. But what I'd really recommend, and I just made a video about this, is that Seller Tools has, just like Helium 10, they have their kind of paid plan and their free plan. And with the free Seller Tools Chrome extension, you can actually, uh, they have their own listing um, analyzer tool as well. And it's actually really, really good. It's actually surprisingly good for this, especially free tool. And like I said, wouldn't pay for this, especially because there's already that really good free tool available by Seller Tools. So personally, that's what I would do um, in this case. But I don't use either tool because honestly, and I, maybe it's foolishness, but I, after having a lot more experience and looking at specific data points, I can kind of see where a listing needs to be improved more than just a tool is going to give me this general uh, number, if that makes sense. Uh, moving on, last two, I know there's quite a few, but hopefully kind of trucking through these, is we have uh, our listing builder. So it's basically kind of like this, at least right now, because it is in beta, very simple kind of step-by-step -step process of kind of creating a listing. In my opinion, much more geared for beginners. I don't really find it helpful or don't really have a need for it. I create everything, you know, all right, you know, I'm going to create my title. I create my title. Okay, next I need to make my, you know, backend uh, search terms and subject matter. I do those, then my bullet points and so on. So I don't really see a need for this. Again, it's a new tool, so it may develop here in the near future, but as of right now, uh, don't have a need whatsoever for it. And then we move on to the last tool here in listing optimization, and that is the audience uh, market feedback tool. So I don't know exactly how Helium 10 does this, but I have a suspicion, and I don't know if this is true or not, I'm just like a thought, is there's a company called PickFu, and basically PickFu is a survey distribution company. It's a place where you can say, hey, um, you know, we have two main images and we want to know what stands out better. Or we have two different types of product packaging. What packaging do people like? Or maybe you take your you know, top competitor's main image and you can upload it to this tool and say, hey, what would you do to improve upon this product? And then basically have people tell you how to make a better product than your competitors. So a lot of cool things you can do. But basically any question that you have about your product, you can ask your target audience on PickFu and basically upload images, ask the question, and you get quantitative and qualitative data back of people you know, ranking, hey, here's what I like, here's what I dislike, here's my reasons why. And it's super, super powerful primary data that you can collect that is going to really help reduce your risk when you launch a new product on Amazon. And it's gonna help you blow past your competitors. Really awesome. And basically, um, audience, it seems to do the same thing. I feel like it might be like white labeling or somehow integrated with PickFu, it's very similar. So um, I haven't used this because I use PicFu. I don't really see a need to use this, but I feel it's very similar and it may actually use the exact same audience and they might have some kind of partnership, though I don't know and I'm just totally guessing, uh, but just based on the way I've kind of seen. So um, anyway, I would use PicFu instead. I've used it a lot of time and PicFu specializes. That's all they do day in and day out is only survey data. Where Helium 10, I've noticed as of recently, is really good. Again, we're gonna get to some other really good tools but they're trying to become this place where it's a one-stop shop for Amazon sellers. So like every tool that you need, Helium 10 has, but in my opinion, is it the best of each type of tool? Some of them, yes, and others, no. So it's kind of a mix. And that's why I'm being honest with you going through this. And this would be one of them that I would use PickFu over um, audience. So I know it's a lot. Uh, stick with me here. Promise we'll get through this a little bit faster. Next, we move on to the analytics, which we have three little tools here. So keyword tracker, market tracker, and profits. So I'll start here with profits. 
profits are basically this way to be able to track your actual you know, net profit, all of your Amazon costs and fees and PPC, and just see your profit uh, overall. So it's a great idea. Um, we, my wife and I tried this for several months and honestly, it's not very good in our opinion at all. Very messy. It doesn't show me the most important info. It's very hard for me to drill down to specific products and see the profit per day for different products. This is especially important to me, you know, during launch and right after launch and just seeing overall trends, you know, like profit over time for broken out by specific products. So because of that specifically, and my wife, she does a lot of our kind of um, finances and logistics and she had some trouble that I forget what it was exactly. But anyway, regardless, we tried it out for several months, really not that good. And instead, now what we use is Jungle Scout. So it used to be Fetcher. And then Fetcher was this um, profit, you know, now this Amazon profit company that was bought out by Jungle Scout. So now it's part of Jungle Scout. It's the, I forget what the tool name is, but it's their like profits tool or their, you know, financial tool that just tracks actual profit. And you can drill down to specific products and look at it over time, which is really, really helpful to know your real profit and to know your real profit per product for whatever date range. So you can see before and after launch or just like what your most seasonal after you've been selling for a few years, what are your biggest seasons, things like that, right? So really helpful. So yeah, can't really recommend it. Um, next, we have Market Tracker. This is still, I think, a little bit newer too as of the creation of this video. Uh, interesting, basically, let's click on this. It's a way to kind of track specific markets. So for example, like the dog toy market, the soap mold market, different types of markets that you can kind of create. And basically, it's a combination of tracking, you know, the top sellers, like the ASINs in those categories, plus keywords, and looking at overall keyword volume and um, sales. And it could be helpful, but for me, I like to look at my own specific keyword ranking, my own specific competitors, um, and I use like Google Trends, which is a free tool to look at like sales trends or just, you know, general search trends over time. I also use other, you know, I use uh, Helium 10's keyword data that I'll share in a second, as well as um, Google keyword data. And between all of what I'm already using, I just don't see really a need for a market tracker. It's not really going to give me any new data that's going to be helpful to me, if that makes sense. So not really for or against it. I just personally don't see a use for it uh, using the tools that I already have. But moving on to the last one here, Keyword Tracker. Uh, this I really like this tool. I love this tool uh, by Helium, Helium 10, one of my favorites. And basically what you can do is on the left-hand side, you'll input all of your products. So if it's one, just put that in there, as many as you have. And then on the right-hand side, you input um, all the keywords that you wanna track, okay? So you know all those main keywords that you're targeting with your exact match Amazon PPC, that you're you know, optimizing for your Amazon listing, take those keywords, upload them, and then you can also add your competitors. So then Helium 10 basically tells you and keeps track of, okay, for this product that you've input, which is yours, right? Um, here's how well it's doing. So like it increased rank for this keyword, it decreased for this keyword, right? Or overall ranking is up, overall ranking is down. So this is really, really, really helpful when you know, I'm running Pinterest ads and Google ads and you know, launching a product, I'm like, okay, am I increasing keyword rank for my important keywords or not? You know, how is that affecting? And then I can look at you know, my profit, my sales data as well. But key, looking at your organic keyword ranking for your product is super important. And then on top of that, what Helium 10 does as well, it's really cool, is that you can track your competitors. So like my top five competitors, okay, I'm ranking you know, position 11, you know, how do I rank compared to my other competitors? And let's say, oh, I'm actually number, I'm actually, you know, ranking better than my top five or, you know, other competitors. That's a really good sign. Or I'm ranked number 11th and all of my, you know, five competitors are above me and I'm number sixth at, at 11. Then I, you know, I know I can probably improve. So really interesting. Again, it totally depends on your product and your market and what you want to do with it. But I especially love it during product launches. And I also love just ongoing, like, how am I doing? Like, how am I doing compared to my competitors? Am I overall increasing or decreasing? Uh, so really important data points. One of the most important uh, metrics that I look at for a successful um, Amazon product is organic keyword ranking, okay? Moving on to keyword research. Starting down here, we have four different tools. First with my list. This is basically a place where you can keep all of your different keyword lists. So if you have five different products that you are optimizing for, you can have five different keyword lists, one for each product within Helium 10. And the integration is really cool. Like you can kind of integrate those lists. Like you can save keywords from one place, put it in the list and then, you know, copy and paste the list into, you know, your listing optimization or whatever. So it integrates well within Helium 10, but always, always, always really important. Make sure that all of your master keyword lists, like those important keyword lists that you download and you have a hard copy of somewhere safe on your hard drive 
because if you're paying monthly for Helium 10 and they have all of your keyword data and then you stop paying, you have to pay to get access. Or if there's some kind of glitch, you lose access account, like the data gets wiped, it's gone. So you wanna make sure you're not relying on a tool to keep your important data. Make sure you also have some sort of like a hard version of a lot of your important data and that just goes beyond your keywords. So that's why I don't really use it so much, but it can be helpful and I use it a little bit. Next, we have misspellinator. Uh, it's a misspellings checker, just to make sure there's no misspellings. I use Grammarly and I recommend your title, your bullet points, your A plus content, your description. Make sure you take all of that text and you put it into Grammarly. Um, well, I'd recommend Grammarly, there's other tools as well to make sure that there's no misspellings or also grammatical issues. Uh, I don't use this at all, the Helium 10 tool, because I don't really find a need for it. Grammarly checks for misspellings and a lot more, and it's 100% free. It's not even like free and then paid. It's totally free. Um, you can upgrade if you want, but the free version is awesome with Grammarly. So does the same and better than Helium 10. And then moving on to a couple other cool tools that I really like. Number one is Magnet. So again, Magnet is in the keyword research section. But I, I use Magnet a little bit for keyword research. So two things. One is for highly profitable potential keywords to target with my Amazon PPC. And the other side is that I use it for product research. And I like to use it more for product research. So what does that look like? Okay, so what I can do is whether I'm selling a soap mold and I want to find keywords to target with Amazon PPC, or I want to do some product research relating to a certain category. So let's say actually um, we just put in a random, let's say silicone. All right, so silicone, we wanna launch some kind of product in the um, you know, silicone space. Maybe we're knowledgeable of silicone. Maybe you know, our uncle is a supplier of silicone, so it gives us a really good advantage, which is actually the case of someone that I was spe recently speaking with. So we're gonna go ahead and click on get keywords. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull you know, keywords that are similar or relating to, we'll do a new search, uh, silicone. It's gonna give you the search volume, um, number of competing products, CPR, which basically means, I'll scroll down here to show you CPR. Basically, um, it's the number of products that you need to sell in order to basically like rank uh, over a certain period of time. So as you can see here, so, you know, this is how many units you need to sell over eight days in order to rank. It's a good general number. So in case you're like thinking about product launching, uh, this can be helpful. You'll put in, you know, specific keywords and then Hel Magnet can tell you, okay, um, you know, you'll probably need to sell one a day for eight days in order to rank for this. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more, but it's a good general indication. Um, it is helpful, but you'll find that reality is a little bit different from theory, but it is definitely, definitely helpful. So all this data that you see here on the screen for each keyword, and now how do I use this? Um, so yeah, CPR, that's sometimes interesting to look at. I'll sometimes use that, but really what I like to look at is Magnet IQ score. So the higher the score, the better. So Magnet IQ score is this unique score that Helium 10 has that I really like where it basically looks at rel keywords that have relatively high search volume and relatively low number of competitors. So high demand, low competition. Now it is, it's just kind of this, this blanket formula. So you'll find that there's a lot of weird results that come up, but there's also a lot of gold in there as well. So what I like to look at in, when it comes to product research, let's say that for whatever reason, I wanna sell a silicone related product, or I'm just generating random ideas in silicone, I'm just gonna you know, type in keywords that relate to things I'm interested in or my hobbies, like paintball, hot sauce, I don't know, like beer, Christian, Muslim, whatever it might be, and put that in there and then find products that relate. But what I wanna look at is keywords that have a high Magnet IQ score and write those down as potential options because again, Helium 10 is finding that they have relatively high search volume with relatively no number of competitors. Now, like I said, I prefer to use Google keyword volume, uh, Pinterest, Etsy, and identify products that you know have high demand outside of Amazon with not a lot of options. But this is another way to find products that don't have a ton of demand or that don't have a ton of options on Amazon yet have high demand. But as you'll see, you have to go through quite a few. There's gonna be a lot, the majority, like maybe one out of every hundred keywords you find is gonna be good or even less than that. So there is a lot of digging you have to do like silicone baking mat quarter sheet. Maybe there's a bunch of uh, silicone baking mats, but not specifically the quarter sheet or maybe for example here, 16,000 Magnet IQ score, silicone baking mat full sheet. Maybe there, there's a lot of silicone baking mats, but there's not a lot of full sheets. So it kind of gets you thinking, okay, if I was gonna sell a silicone baking mat, let me figure out like what specific kind of long tail keyword has high demand, but not that many competitors, okay? So anyway, I have a whole video on this. Obviously I could go way, way, way down the rabbit hole, but that's one way. And then another way is if any of these keywords that have a high Magnet IQ score in general, 
or relatively, you know, high search volume, low number of competitors. But regardless, as long as there's relevant keywords on here that I'm not already targeting with my Amazon PPC campaigns, anything that's relevant, boom, I'm going to go ahead and select those. So like, let's see what we got. Silicon baking mat. Oh, if it would select, I don't know why it's not. Anyway, I just go through and select all of those um, that are relevant. I would go ahead and then I would um, export the data and I would then add those to my Amazon PPC campaigns to make sure I'm targeting as many relevant keywords strategically as possible. So that's kind of the two ways that I use Magnet. And if you guys want full videos on any of these tools, please let me know. And then moving on to my last tool here in keyword research that I use a ton, that is the Cerebro tool. And with Cerebro, basically what you'll do is you'll identify your top five to 10 uh, top competitors. So whoever is the biggest sellers in your category that either you wanna enter or that are already in your category and go ahead and enter them here. So for example, um, we're just gonna use this for an example. Uh, here's one of the um, ASINs. We'll go ahead and put in you know, all 10, click on get keywords. And then what happens is you can kind of see here down below is what the Cerebro tool does is it does a reverse ASIN search. So it identifies for all of those, you know, one to 10 ASINs that you've input, what are all of the keywords that these products are indexing for collectively? So the more you input, the more keywords that you get. And then basically you can find, okay, here's all the keywords that my top competitors are indexing for. And then you can organize by search volume and you're like, okay, so here are the most important keywords um, to make sure that I include when I'm optimizing my listing, to make sure that I'm targeting with my Amazon PPC, et cetera. So super fast tool to use, which is awesome really accurate, really good data, um, and very, very comprehensive. So for all of those reasons, it's an amazing keyword uh, research tool specifically, highly, highly recommend. And um, I have a full video uh, going through exactly how to use this tool, so I won't spend any more time. So if you're interested, I'll link that in the description section below. Moving on, we have the learning tab. So here in the learning tab, it's basically uh, Helium 10's own course and training videos. And there's a lot of good content in here that you can check out for yourself. But one of the biggest things that a lot of sellers don't take into account is if you're enrolling in a course by Helium 10, they're going to teach you how to sell on Amazon using their tools. They're not going to teach you how to find products using Google keyword data. They're not going to teach you how to you know, use other tools with Helium 10 to create you know, an even bigger master keyword list, et cetera. Okay? They're going to you know, be biased toward their own set of tools. So just kind of keep that in mind. Again, I've heard some good things. There's a lot of great content that I've seen them kind of put out. But there's also some biased content, you know, understandably, because it's their own company. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and if you're looking for alternatives, I do have a $20 uh, Amazon FBA course on Udemy, as many of you already know. Um, I'll link that in the description section as well in case you're interested, but do your own research and choose whatever you think would work uh, best for you as always. Next, we move down to the operations section. We're almost done guys, I promise. And uh, first we have Alta by Helium 10. This is basically like lending for Amazon sellers. I've not used it. I do not have a need for it. I do not want to go into debt. Uh, I want to bootstrap personally, all of my own, you know, entrepreneurial and business endeavors. So definitely not going to recommend it because I can't get financial advice, um, but it is a financial solution in case you're looking for funding potentially, but I'm not going to talk any more about that. You can look on it on your own, but I don't use it at all and don't foresee myself using it. Next, we have alerts. So you can set up uh, alerts for your products. So if you're, in case your listing gets hijacked, in case there's any kind of issues that arise, you can get notified kind of immediately and, and see that in the dashboard and get notified. So that's really, really useful. And if you already have Helium 10, I'd recommend kind of setting that up. Inventory protector. This used to be really common when there was more rebates and coupon giveaways. Now, since that's actually against Amazon service of service with the rebate side and, and two-step URLs and things like that, um, definitely don't use this at all. It just kind of to help you not give away too many units. Don't even use that at all. I foresee this actually being discontinued from Helium 10 uh, personally. Next, you have Refund Genie. Um, this is basically where, on average, a lot of people don't know this, but Amazon will misplace or damage between one to 3% of your inventory. And that's a, that's a fact. So with Refund Genie, Helium, Helium 10 can basically help find those damaged units and get reimbursed from Amazon. Cause basically you paid for those products, sent it to Amazon and then Amazon destroyed your products or at least some of them, Amazon owes you money and they will pay you, but you kind of have to do the research on your end. So Helium 10 has an option for this. However, I definitely also don't recommend this. Why? Because there's a company called Gatita. Gatita is a company that focuses only day in and day out on reimbursements for Amazon sellers. After talking to multiple Amazon sellers, as well as my own experience, if you wanna basically get the most money back from Amazon, the, the one to 3% you know, that Amazon owes you, 
your best chance is using Gatita. And the way Gatita works that I really like is they're going to find, first of all, they're going to find the maximum number of reimbursements for you. And then you only pay. So Gatita's going to tell you once you create a free account, hey, we found this much money for you. They go back over the past 18 months. And if you want them to process, then Gatita gets 25% cut, but only if they find you anything. So if Gatita doesn't find you any reimbursements, you don't pay them anything. And then if they find reimbursements for you and you want them to process everything and do all the paperwork, then they get 25% of whatever they claim for you. So really, in my opinion, kind of an honest and good business model. We use them personally. They're awesome. We've had thousands and thousands of dollars back from Gatita, even over the past probably like several months. So really awesome and would recommend them instead. Uh, next, we have follow-up. So email automation. Um, Amazon has become very, very, very restrictive over the emails that you can send to customers. Because of that, I don't use email automation with my Amazon business anymore. It's because it's more of a liability than it is a benefit to my business. So I don't even use it at all. And because of that, I, I don't use Helium 10. I don't use Feedback Whiz. I don't use any other tool. So can't recommend it. However, literally this week, Amazon just announced that they will be introducing some kind of email marketing program that is through the Amazon platform, which I'm really excited about. So things could change in the future and keep an eye on for that. Uh, but for now, I uh, don't use the follow-up. And then lastly, we have inventory management. So I'll go ahead and click on this just to kind of show you. And then here in this section, you can basically connect your Amazon account, your supplier information as well with your lead time and kind of all these different settings and set it up. And then basically Helium 10 can give you, you know, restock suggestions. So, hey, based on your past sales data and what you're currently selling, we recommend that you go back into stock here. Um, you can manage your suppliers and non-FBA um, inventory. So kind of more three PLs and things like that. A couple other things, but basically the gist of it is like, as many of you know, Allie, my wife, handles all of our logistics. And you know, I've asked her about this a little bit and it can be a little bit helpful, but really based on the systems that we already set up, we don't really use that. It's not bad, but personally, we would never pay for this specifically, but it kind of depends, you know, kind of look around in it, maybe look at a couple tutorial videos on this specifically, but I can't really recommend, but I also don't say stay away from it. It's just kind of like in the middle. Personally, haven't found it better than the systems that we already had in place with our business. And last but not least, we move on to the marketing tab, which has just two simple tools here, and that are portals and the Adtomic um, Amazon PPC tool. So first with portals, basically it is like a landing page builder for Amazon sellers specifically. Um, I don't use portals because I already have a lot of experience. Before I even got into Amazon, I was building landing pages for clients. I was doing um, social media marketing for small businesses near my college town. So uh, that's kind of my previous experience. So I've been using landing page software of other kinds, even as simple as like MailChimp, using Klaviyo, using our own Shopify website and creating new pages on our website and using those as landing pages. I prefer doing that. But if I didn't already have experience with landing pages, portals can be really, really great. So I definitely, um, if you're not super familiar with landing pages um, and you want to build some, for example, landing pages, just a one page website. So let's say you have some kind of offer on your product insert, like, Hey, um, thanks so much for purchasing. Here's this awesome, you know, free guide that's actually super helpful. You know, click on, you know, enter this link into your browser. They enter it into their browser. It's this really short, simple link, and it takes them to this um, landing page. So if you don't, if you already have your website, like a Shopify website, I would just recommend maybe consider creating another page on your website and send people that way because you're already paying for the site and everything. Otherwise, you don't already have a website. You're not really familiar with using landing page software. Then portals can be really helpful for you. Now, moving on to the Adtomic uh, Amazon PPC. I, I played around with this a little bit, not actually using it, but just kind of diving in and looking at the data and looking at how it works, as well as talking to a lot of other subscribers and followers or uh, members of our Facebook group and digging into the Amazon PPC tool here, cannot recommend. Um, I think it's kind, of, it's kind of garbage, not really very good, messy and doesn't really do exactly what I want. And again, in my view, it's sort of like Helium 10's new... Uh, goal to be this all-in-one place for Amazon sellers instead of trying to focus on maybe one or a few or even just trying to be the best in each category. So uh, I, that's definitely the case with Adtomic, in my opinion. And a better tool that I'd recommend, which can actually even be cheaper a la carte, is the um, Apex PPC tool by FBA Excel. It's a brand new tool actually that just launched that actually helped develop with a bunch of other fellow Amazon sellers, PPC experts, uh, it's more affordable. It works totally different from other tools. Really, really cool. 
I made a video about that recently, so you can check that out if you want. Uh, but that's what I'd recommend instead. But feel free to check it out. I just, uh, honestly, I cannot recommend it. Almost in a way, because I'm an affiliate, I wish I could, but I can't. And I hope you found this video valuable. If you are interested in using one or more of these tools that we discussed to grow your Amazon business, then I want to let you know if you want to get 50% off your first month, whether for one individual tool or for an entire plan, you can use code ESCAPEPLAN50. Or if you want to get 10% off uh, your kind of lifetime plan, so you know if you buy for one year, two months, or whatever, you can use code ESCAPEPLAN10. Again, I am a proud affiliate of Helium 10. Using either of these codes, I do get a percent kind of kickback from the referral. So I'd really appreciate your support and hopefully it helps you get you a little bit of a discount there if you find Helium 10 valuable, which like I've said before, and as we've covered, can be or not depending on your goals. So regardless, again, as always, thank you so much for your support. Really hope you found this valuable and really helped grow your business. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this every single week. Wishing you nothing but the best. God bless and look forward to seeing you in future videos.